Hello, everybody, and uh, thanks for coming. Uh, this is uh, one of uh, first of many uh, live sessions that, that um, we're going to start having with everyone and just give everybody the opportunity to um, ask us uh, basically anything or anything you're curious about or you know anything with the software or just any questions that you may have. I am Brandon Nedley. Um, a lot of you probably already know me. Um, of course, I'm product manager here and I uh, have my colleague, Jared. Hi, I'm Jared Russell. Uh, some of you also might know me. Um, uh, I'm senior product analyst here. Um, been with the company in a couple of weeks will be about seven years and I'm here helping out Brandon and supporting you guys. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Jared. So um, here's how we're going to do this um, as we're going through and uh, and going over questions that have already been uh, sent to us and have been submitted by a few of you all. Um, if you formulate any other questions, go ahead and type them. Um, here in chat and we will do our best to, to get um, to those questions and if we uh, do not get to your questions we are still going to um, log them and um, and get back to you as soon as we can so uh, don't don't be shy feel free to, to ask whatever you want so um, I'm gonna go through these uh, user submissions unfortunately I don't have the names of who submitted these the first question I have is is there a timeline for when we can expect to see any updates on the reporting platform so yes we are updating reporting and analytics uh, this year uh, for sure um, it, it is on our roadmap we probably will be doing a lot of updates to the legacy reporting platform, um, but we want to bring the new one up to speed and add you uh, add more uh, data points. Um, also, give you ways to you know, better ways to visually represent your data, and um, also uh, making a new dashboard. And so this is going to make it easier to actually save and find and manage your pre-existing reports. This question, I'm gonna. Uh, this is for Jared. Um, they ask, "Is there a way to manage trips in different time zones in the grid? We want to make sure that these trips are entered in the correct time to the affiliate, but it would be great to see it in the correct place in the grid for dispatch to monitor. As an example, 9 a.m. PST trip would be a 12 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard trip, but would appear in the grid as 9 a.m. Go ahead, Jared." Right. So, yes, there is um, a, a grid column. It is named uh, local PU time for local pickup time that you can add to your dispatch grid. Now, the pickup time that you enter in on the reservation field is going to be the pickup time in that time zone uh, where the customer is being picked up. Uh, but the local pickup time that you can add uh, to your dispatch grid is going to be your time. And this is based on uh, the time zone that you set in your company preferences and the time zone that is set on the reservation. So you want to make sure that you set that time zone on the reservation. And so on the dispatch grid, you can have a local pickup time and the pickup time columns next to each other to kind of see um, your time and the time that the customer is going to be picked up in their time zone. Awesome. Thanks, Jared, for that. Um, I actually have another question for you. Is there a way to export rate tables to Excel? Right now, there currently isn't a direct way to um, get those rates into a CSV or an Excel file. But what you can do right now is open up a rate matrix, whichever one that you want to export, and you can click on the print option. This will uh, open up a new screen that'll load up all of your rates from zone to zone, vehicle type, and from there you can select all and paste that into Excel. And that way you, uh, that Excel file, after clearing some formatting and doing some things, you will have those uh, particular rates that are in that rate matrix. There are some things that, uh, you know, me and Brandon have discussed, you know, going forward to kind of have a direct way to export those out as long as well as zones in the zone table as well. So we're looking to do that to, to help you guys out and better manage your rates. Awesome. Um, and, and another thing, like uh, Jared mentioned, 
Uh, we are working on some uh, tools in general regarding rates. So uh, we do have planned, uh, there's a rate upload tool where you'll be able to you know, upload your own matrices and accounts and stuff like that. And we could you know, potentially look at you know, adding the download, like the reverse of that, you know, while we're doing that project. So, so there are a lot of things that are, that are on the horizon when it comes to rates and tables and, and importing and exporting. So our next uh, question, is there a timeline for when users will be able to purge inactive accounts from the system? So in short, I'll go ahead and say no, there is not a, a current timeline. We have a lot of plans for what we're going to do with accounts. And I actually have a second question, which is, you know, are there any plans to allow the ability to merge duplicate accounts to assist in account cleanup? And I think that these two, you know, although they're, they're two separate questions, they're, they're pretty close. While we're going in and adding features to prevent and stop, you know, duplicate accounts from being made and also uh, allowing you to merge duplicate accounts, giving you a tool to do so. I think it would be an appropriate time to uh, look at, you know, purging them or at least figuring out how in our user interface there, you don't have to deal with them anymore, right? And so, you know, you may not be able to completely delete them, but maybe we can find some space where you don't have to worry about them or they don't come up in searches or, the, or they're com completely sort of hidden away. So we will pay special attention to that um, while we're trying to figure out with duplicate accounts, you know, some may be created on the online reservation system and some may be created in your, in your, uh, your LA web and your back office system. Like, how do we make sure that that doesn't happen? And if it's already happened, how do we make sure that, that we give you a good tool to merge them together? So, um, so that is definitely upcoming. So let's go to our next question. Is there a way to see the affiliate confirmation number in the grid without either having to go into the trip or without having to put their confirmation number as the PO reference number? It's an interesting question. Yeah, so there's kind of two things here. So for your farm in affiliates confirmation number, that is going to be the PO reference number if you receive that over from through LANET or through a partner. Now for a farm out, um, I was actually checking on this earlier and it doesn't look like we have that field to be added as a column on the grid. So uh, that is something that we will get added in the future because it is uh, important information to have. Awesome. We're almost finished with our user submissions uh, from earlier, so we'll, we'll just continue going down and uh, then we'll go to some of the questions that you all have been submitting now. Are there any plans to update the trip edit and change log to include more detail? Uh, yes, absolutely. We have on our roadmap this year as, a, as one of the high items that we, we're uh, dedicated to getting to is to giving you a, uh, a proper change log. So of course this is, you know, we want to consolidate the logs. You notice there's a dispatch log and then there's like the regular reservation log and then there's, you know, all these other logs that have to do with the reservation that we really think that we could put it in one place and track more reservation changes. We're even thinking of putting in an option to force whoever made the change to, you know, type, you know, what, what happened or, uh, you know, actually record notes for that, for that change log. So um, that is coming and that's not something we're going to force on people, but, but we're thinking that, you know, some users, some operators want to know, you know, when and why you know, not just when, but why something was changed by what specific user. And so we think that making an option for that will probably be you know, one of the better ways to handle it. Um, but we still are in the planning phases for, for this, and that's just kind of how I imagine we're going to, to do it. But as we get closer to the release date, or at least as we get closer through the planning phases, then I'll usually solicit feedback from, from everyone here. So be on the lookout for that. But yeah, to answer your question, absolutely. That is coming in 2021. So our next question is, when batch editing trips in the grid, a restricted driver can still be assigned to a client who has them restricted. Are there any ways to avoid that while using the batch edit? If I'm understanding correctly, I, I know that whenever that driver is restricted, you'll get 
um, it's either in red or it's some sort of notification, uh, right, Jerry? Yeah, it'll appear in red in most cases. There are some issues with some browsers not displaying that or mobily not displaying that, but uh, you should also get a notification warning you that the, the driver is restricted. Yep. And another thing to add is, I don't know if you guys have heard about it yet, but we're working on a new uh, redesign Limo Anywhere mobile, and we're putting a lot of work and a lot of uh, you know design work into batch editing trips and batch updating and assigning drivers and things like that and trying to come up with some really really cool and efficient ways of three to get your your dispatching and your scheduling done so um you know be on the lookout for that and we're still kind of in the design phase on, on that one but uh, we do think that we could significantly enhance the experience of doing batch edits and uh, assignments while respecting the driver uh, schedules. All right, and this is for Jared. Um, is it possible to send payment receipts to more than one email automatically? Currently, we are sending them manually, but it would be great if there was a way that multiple emails could receive these receipts. So yeah, it, there is a setting under uh, my office that you can set to email payment receipts when a payment is taken. Now there's some more work that we kind of have planned because right now on the email payment receipt window, you can only send to two email addresses from the billing contact account and two, two email addresses from the passenger account. And so we want to kind of expand that a little bit more to kind of match what we have with the sending out confirmations and things like that. So that is one way you can have it email payment receipts out when a payment is taken automatically. You can also set up some uh, scheduled messaging after the pickup time, uh, you know, so many hours if you're on a schedule making those payments. Or if it is on an invoice as well, you can have, you know, when the invoice is paid, send out a scheduled message and attach some different forms to that as well. Awesome, Jared. Thank you. And our uh, last question that we have here uh, that was submitted uh, earlier is, is there a roadmap for moving data uh, to accounting? Yeah, absolutely. Right now we're, we're working on some enhancements to uh, Zapier that will help get the correct data um, exported over to uh, CRM and marketing. We'll actually have a webinar on that in, in a few weeks and uh, you, you're gonna get an email if you haven't already about how to join that uh, you know, webinar. It'll be very similar to what we have, what we're having right now. We're also making some enhancements that will allow um, add-ons, or LA add-ons, a lot of you probably work with them. It'll allow them to make a more direct QuickBooks integration as well. And what's nice is that whichever route you're gonna take, whether it's the uh, Zapier or whether it's working with add-ons, I, I think they'll both be uh, available sort of around the, around the same time. So uh, you'll have multiple options on, on what you wanna deal with. We also have some partners that we're uh, working with, payment partners. So if some of you may use uh, Century or CBS, uh, Century Payments or uh, EBIS Charge. And um, they are, they're also uh, potentially working on a, uh, a module that would help some of that payment data uh, get over to QuickBooks through their portal. So, so just, you know, depending on what route you take, we definitely have a, a few different options available to you. I think we can get to some of the questions that have been submitted during this chat. Jared, I'm going to go ahead and start from the top. And I'm actually going to ask you about this one. Um, it says, when are you, this is from Alexander uh, Jagadik. It says, when are you going to fix the bug? When you add an account number, it takes away the gratuity. You familiar with that? It depends. Uh, I kind of have to look more into it. But I know like if on an account, you have your master account gratuity fields. So if you and if you have the gratuity already on the the rate table and then you add the account afterwards, it's going to you know do a rate lookup and and uh, replace some of those rates in the rate table because there might be specific rates or specific master account gratuity 
uh, that needs to be applied. Now, we can look further into the bug and see what we can do to make some improvements as far as rates and, and how the rate table was populated, definitely. Awesome. Our next question is from Matt Berger. It says, Brandon, in custom forms, there are some junk tables in the HTML code inserted by LA causing a page break in Gmail, specifically for the trip rates itemized variable. Can you please address? Should be an easy fix, and thank you. Thanks, Matt, for your question. So it, I actually remember hearing about this. You know, believe it or not, Matt, it's not that easy of a fix. Uh, just a little background information. Uh, I think I might have looked at this before uh, a while back. Just imagine uh, having you know, whatever you know, infinite amount of email clients that you're trying to write code to make sure that everything shows up the same. It's, it's very, it's very difficult actually. But you know, sometimes we'll do these things and they'll show up in everything except for Gmail, right? And then other times they'll show up in everything, but you know Yahoo or, or or whatever. I'll have to go back and take a look at this and see if uh, I think we may have a pre-existing ticket for this, if I'm not mistaken, Jerry. Do you remember this? We probably do. There's yeah. there's there's uh, right, there's some on. some tags and and there's different stuff, and then of course you know the WYSIWYG that improvements. That might be the larger the larger issue, right? Right, right. So. There are, there are things we, we definitely have in works to help improve custom forms and, and those tags. Yeah, and uh, Matt, if you can actually, I'll actually just take take it down so I can um, shoot you a note later. It probably won't be today, but I'll, I'll definitely get back to you and I'll uh, we can get in your system and I can get some more specific examples of what you're talking about just to make sure I, I have the bug and it's uh, properly documented. Jerry Parsons, this, this question is from uh, Jerry Parsons. It says, can I move my accounts to another Limo Anywhere account as I have shut down my Limo Anywhere and work with another company who also uses Limo Anywhere and do my scheduling? And so here's what I will say. Uh, we allow you to export your account data from your system. So if you go to accounts, I think, I think it's called export accounts in the account section. Uh, and you can choose what fields you want to export and it'll export those out into uh, I think in Excel or, or CSV and then you could use our account upload template and Send it into customer service and they will upload those accounts into the system of your of your uh, choosing So yes, we'll, we do offer that you just have to export them yourself out, out of your own limo anywhere system and then We'll give you a template. You 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 know make sure it's in the right format and send it back to us, and we'll take care of the upload for you. I will say that we do keep the you know your data there, and if your company is suspended, uh, you can call into billing, and we can unsuspend you. And the customer service can see about helping you get those accounts exported and and imported, as Brandon said. Um, thanks. And then another note is uh, I mentioned earlier, we are working on that upload tool, which is going to make all data uploads in the hands of, of you all. So um, we're, we're adding a new section in tools where uh, it's drag and drop. And, uh, you know, as long as you use the right template, you put it in there and then you can always upload uh, things like reservation manifests, accounts and uh, rates and zones. So um, that is coming later this year. Uh, we have a few projects that, uh, or at least one major project we are, we're working on now before we can start it, but that is coming. Next question is from Jerry K. Pearson. It says, when there is a trip that goes for more than one day, are you able to make it that we can pick more than the one date? just so we don't have to go and do the trip on each day. Go ahead, Jared. Currently, a trip in Limo Anywhere is uh, you know, just for one day. This is something that we have discussed as well in the past about adding. And also right now, I believe addons.la can kind of help you with this. If I'm correct on that, Mike Blackburn can probably put that in the chat. But right now it is only one day just through LA. All right, thanks, Jared. Next question is from uh, Jeffrey Quijada. It says, how can we get more characters on the scheduled messaging for text, SMS, or MMS? Also predetermined text messages to affiliate, driver to avoid miscommunication of information. 
Yeah. So this is SMS, you know, limitations and, you know, carriers, you know, have a character limit amount. And, you know, that's kind of why we set it that way, because it's, it's, it's pretty standard. But it might be something that we can start revisit and look back on to see, you know, if we can expand that without there being a loss of information. Awesome. Yeah, I think we could definitely look at... Because I know with advances, you know, that, that have come with text messaging and things like that, there, it might be able to be done. Mm -hmm. So question, I, and I just, I, I, let's look into this a little bit more. Sometimes I thought the providers will automatically split the message. They, they do now. That's what, you know, uh, that's why we should kind of revisit it now. Because I know a lot of these limits were set that way and have been set that way for many years. Mm -hmm. And of course, we should advance and keep up with it. Right, right. So this next question is for uh, is from uh, Andrew Wright. He says, "Is there a time frame for more advanced Zapier or Zapier integra uh, integration?" So um, yeah, ab absolutely. I think I think I mentioned earlier we are working on fixing some uh, some nagging bugs that have been in Zapier or Zapier for a bit, and those are actively being worked on right now. I think we'll probably deploy them out to everyone That's sometime next week. And then there's several new features that we have planned. Uh, you know, like I said, bringing over a lot more data points that just don't come from reservations. Um, having more triggers that are related to, you know, invoicing and account creation, things like that. And so, um, so yes, yes, absolutely, we will be updating that, you know, this month and probably towards the beginning of, of next month. And then having a webinar over all of these changes that we are that we are making. So um, our next question is from Abe Metz. He asks, "Is there a way to just add multiple booking contacts for one company without having to create multiple accounts?" Jerry. Yeah, you can only add one booking contact to a billing contact. Now, there is ways around this. You can create a what we call like a master billing contact account and assign that booking contact to that account. And then you can have sub billing contact accounts underneath the master billing contact account. So that way that booking contact can book for all of those master uh, sub billing contact accounts and their assets. Yep, that, I think that's, that's exactly right. Thank you, Jared. Okay, this uh, question is from Steve Kwa. Are there any plans to make LA interactive with QuickBooks Online? And uh, yeah, so, so we talked about that earlier um, with the different options for, for QuickBooks. So if you didn't hear me, yes, we are uh, working through add-ons, also Zapier, and uh, potentially Century uh, Business Solutions uh, through the Payment Gateway Portal. Peter Smutney, are you going to integrate or work with Booking.com at least to automatically update their bookings into LA? I am not 100% sure if we're going to do that. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, that's not something that I typically uh, handle. Um, that's, that's done through other members of my team. So um, I, I can't accurately answer that question right now. I can say it's, uh, you know, it's technologically feasible, right? But I can't say that we're actually going to do that. One second here. I'm just going to make sure our uh, volume levels are, are good. So just bear with me. Okay, there we go. All right, let's go to our, um, our next question. It's also from Jeffrey. Um, Kiata. He says, can we have an agent login porter, portal similar to the client login portal to see trips that they are on for commission but not on billing account on the reservation yeah i, I don't think it's something that's out of the question for sure um you know i i think it would make sense to have a feature like that what i will say is that it's tough for me to promise when that can be done because there is a significant amount of work that we have planned already for 2021 but it, it is something that we can uh, you know think about and, and even 
you know, we uh, we do like to take votes and, and stuff like that, and um, you know, take take polls from the Facebook group. So, if it is something that a lot of users want to see, and it brings value to uh, to everyone, and you know, th those uh, users want to see it over the uh, other in, in features that we're going to announce for 2021, then yeah, absolutely. It's, it's not, it's not out of the question. Uh, we really want to give you guys the tools that uh, you want and that, that you need. But as of now, that was not on our 2021 uh, roadmap plan. But uh, as you know, roadmaps change. We just have to uh, try to do what's best for everyone. Jared, how are they saying your audio is? Are you good? Yeah, it seems to be good. Yeah. Okay, perfect. That was all my fault, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Question from Matt Berger. Is there a one-click export to Maps feature to view routing information on Google Maps from LA Desktop? This is an interesting question. I think I know how you're going to answer this one. Um, and there's not a one click option. <laughs> uh, but we do, um, you know, have the, if you right click on a trip on the dispatch grid, you can uh, use the mapping function. Also a little, little known uh, tip um, on the reservation itself, if you double click on the, the routing address, that will take you out to Google Maps. It's not going to have the full routing information, but it will uh, have that specific location. Now, uh, this is definitely something that we are looking at, uh, and several operators have suggested as well, that we kind of add something like we have in Driver Anywhere, where they can... Uh, export that routing out into uh, the mapping provider of their choice, Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze. But they can also have, have that capability in, on, on uh, the back office as well. Now, now do you think you're trying to, uh, they're trying to um, display all the routes at once or just like a single, you know, for a single trip? From what I've heard, it, it, it varies. A lot of people like to see all of the routes, and especially where their drivers are at in mm -hmm. comparison to those routes. Um, so kind of matching our map tab and our GPS tab, uh, you, know, you know, combining those together into one tab, yeah, uh, probably be, you know, the best option there. Right. And I remember we talked about uh, being able to kind of integrate the map or the GPS, the map, and, and dispatch even, to where they're kind of more of the same screen that kind of flow in and out of each other instead of being like these separate sections. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is in the new uh, Limo Anywhere mobile, uh, you, there will be a mapping feature directly uh, integrated. So it'll on your phone, you'll be able to very easily just click the mapping function and it will show you uh, the the entire route and even like where the driver is and, and stuff like that. So um, Again, we're still working on that, but but we have that feature planned already This question is for Zoran Vetrovic it Says is it possible to delete some trips totally from the system? They want to per they want to get those trips out of there, Jerry. What do they do? So right now uh, There's no purging of uh, reservations from the system and, and the reason being is a lot of the reservations uh, you know, uh, tied to associated with a lot of things in the system and once you uh, kind of purge them uh, it could have some negative effects on other things in, in, uh, in the system that you have. We are looking into um, something that will automate uh, that purging. Uh, it's something that we have discussed before. Like after a, you know, a certain amount of days, it's not going to be in your system anymore if they're deleted. But that is something we are looking into. Mm -hmm. What's next? Uh, you know, you know uh, I'm curious about some, some use cases, right? Like what, why... Why does the trip need to be completely deleted from the system? Right? Have you? What, what have you heard before, Jared? 
I really haven't have heard, heard you know much, much except you know they, they just don't, don't want it in the system. system. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's understandable. I mean, there there may be some some things uh, you know that we need to be you know aware of government regulations and, and things like that as well. But it is something we are looking into. Zorn, do me a favor and shoot an email over to Brandon at LemoniWare.com and let me know exactly why are you trying to delete the trip totally from the system. It, it could be some reason I just don't know about. Um, so so I'm, I'm just curious. And if it's something that I can help you with, then, um, you know, it, it, at least it's on my mind. And, uh, you know, I know the reasoning for it. Uh, next message is from Randy King. Is there anything coming down the pipeline with integrating Square for payments? So, uh, yeah, absolutely. We know we want to do Square and we've been wanting to do Square uh, for a while. If it were not for some, um, and this is just, just for me, you know, we, we have to follow certain um, regulations. And uh, because of that, we have to make sure that our, our Stripe integration is updated and i would say our stripe integration is about the same if not a little bit more work than the square integration so um we, we do have to work on on stripe first and i do think that a lot of the work we're going to do for stripe is going to get us closer to square so we won't have to do as much work I can't promise you that that'll be this year, but it really depends on how our Stripe integration goes. And uh, again, all the other things that we have on the roadmap. You know, I think uh, last year, you know, it was before all this happened, we, we started uh, taking votes for the Square integration. And we had heard a lot of people wanted it, but, you know, once we did a vote and a poll on it, we, we found out that there, you know, Compared to some other features that users have been asking for, it came, you know, like not necessarily on the bottom, but it was one of those lower items out of, you know, out of 20, 20 different features. So um, I, I think it's about time, uh, you know, I'm getting the full roadmap for this year put together. And, you know, just like last year, I'm going to post them and we'll take polls on them and, and we'll, we'll rank these things. And, uh, you know, I can't say that how you're, you know, how the votes come in is exactly how we're going to do it because I mean obviously there's there's other factors that come into play but um, we definitely use that as a gauge to um, to what we're going to what we're going to work on and, and when we're going to work on it so um, hopefully that uh, it's pretty long minute but hopefully that <laughs> answers your question this one is from Richard de Krieger. he says could you build into or AKA agent pay an option to add the commission percentage to account credits to have a loyalty system. Does that make sense, Jerry? Um, yeah, um, somewhat. It's, it's not a bad idea. Um, you know, a loyalty system is, is kind of something we've also discussed and that's been brought up by several of our operators of the loyalty or rewards program. Um, and so, you know, uh, maybe instead of paying out uh, the agent's commissions, it just gets added to an account or something like that. Yeah. Um, that that could be um, uh, something we can look into. Yeah, and I think that, yeah, I'm going to say this, the same thing I, I said earlier. Shoot, shoot an email to Brandon at LemonAnywhere.com and I'm curious, uh, and this this is for anybody, um, or shoot it to to product team at Lemony where that goes to Jared and and myself. But you know, especially a loyalty program, this is something that we'd be coming up with from scratch, and and it, it'd be very tailored to our industry and our software and how you all want to use it. So. Um, with items like this, I want to hear from everyone, like, what is your idea? Like, if it was perfect in Limo Anywhere, exactly how would it work? And so, so please feel free to, to shoot over some more um, suggestions and, and Richard, I'll uh, reach out to you and uh, get some more ideas from you as well. This uh, next question is from Matt Berger. It says, will there be a payment API release so external platforms, payments, 
like square, add on, stripe, etc., can directly be applied to individual trips. So I'm thinking they're asking if a payment is made outside of Limo Anywhere, will it post back into LA? Is that is that what that sounds like to you? Um, I, I think I think so. Yes. So yeah, there are plans for that. Um, in specific, we know Century. We are going to bring that feature uh, to to Century, and so uh, this will give you the ability to send out invoices uh, from LA, and they can uh, your, your customer will get an email, and when they click the link in there, there will be some sort of a form or portal. Uh, whether that's through our ORES or whether that's through uh, one of the external payment providers, um, they'll be able to, you'll be able to make the payment there, and it will post back into Limo anywhere. I even know Century has another feature where um, they have been working on us to get uh, integrated, and this is if you need a new credit card, right, or, or if your credit card is expired, or their, their card is expired in your system, you could send them a form, you know, like a secure form via email, they could fill it out, and it'll update the payment data, uh, you know, in your system. I think that's a much needed feature. I think everyone here dreads calling their clients and asking for their credit card uh, numbers again. Uh, so, so I think stuff like that will be, uh, it's definitely, definitely on the horizon for this year. Um, also in the Stripe integration, because of the nature of, uh, just how it works, there are certain payments that will require, uh, you know, two factor authentication, for instance, like if you are a European customer using a European bank, uh, in those cases, uh, we'll have to be able to send out a payment form via email and they can make it, you know, authenticate with their phones and then it posts back in a limo anywhere. So as a, you know, virtue of that feature, uh, the, the answer is yes, that is, that, that's definitely coming. Right. And that's the, the SEA, um, you know, regulations that are, uh, happening in Europe that, uh, Richard, uh, and, and uh, Stuart have uh, both asked about in the chat, mm -hmm. and we are working on, on yeah, that. Yeah, we are we are hard at work on on those uh, items. Um, and again, we're going to speak candidly here. Uh, it's it's a the way the flow is for the uh, Stripe and the SCA. It it's completely. It's just a little different than how we manage and handle the other payments, so it's just taking a little bit longer than we want. But we are dedicated to doing this, and you know, I mentioned, uh, you know, that we're working on a giant project before we get to our upload tool, and and, and that's what it is. We are uh, we're up updating that uh, some of these payment uh, processors uh, that are used. In, in, in certain countries uh, or, or in Europe in, in specific and really making sure that you're all able to uh, continue on uh, using LA like you always uh, have. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Just make sure I don't miss anybody. Um, this is for uh, from Brian Frederick. Will the ability to have more than one vehicle in a reservation be addressed? Go ahead, Jared. So right now you can have uh, two, uh, two cars assigned to the reservation, and that's the, the max. Um, as, as far as uh, uh, multiple vehicle types, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, and uh, how rates are displayed and calculated and, and, and things like that uh, when you're adding them, uh, you know, different vehicle types uh, to uh, uh, a reservation. So uh, it's something that, you know, it has been brought up before uh, and it is asked about from time to time, but I think that's something that we kind of, uh, also, would like uh, you know your f uh, feedback on on what exactly you're trying to do so we can come up with the best uh, <laughs> uh, 
uh, solution to uh, getting that done. And that's what I was going to uh, add as well. You know, sometimes we get a lot of requests that say, you know, hey, can you, can, you know, like this one, you know, can you, uh, you know, add so and so field to whatever part of the screen and. To make sure that we actually do it correctly, we kind of need to know, like, well, what's going on? Like, what, what problem are you trying to solve? Like, you know, in, in this specific instance, uh, and I would like to talk to you uh, offline, Brian, but I'm curious, like, what what exactly are you doing with two vehicles on it? You know, are you sending two vehicles on a trip? Is one a backup vehicle? I mean, so... Um, if you could let us know what what you know why exactly are you using it that way, um, it would definitely help us uh, be able to uh, you know get a feature like this done. Our next question is from Mark Goldberg. It says, "How about adding a gratuity to online orders?" I will say that we do have plans on bringing back um, the. Uh, optional criteria-based fees that, that, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that, that we uh, did have on, on ORES 2 uh, many, many years ago. Um, but, uh, you know, that way you can uh, provide some upselling um, or, uh, as you suggested, adding gratuity um, on an online order um, uh, as well, those options. And, and uh, correctly, you know, add them to the rate when they're booking. Now, in uh, PWA, I don't know if you want to touch on that a little bit, Brandon. Uh, what we're kind of working on with the gratuity options there. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, as a lot of you know, you you don't see, and if you use DA, uh, the new DA, you don't see the gratuity option uh, in there in, anymore. And we took it out of there, but we're adding it to our new passenger web application. So we're, we're going to try to give your customers an experience that, that they are accustomed to. And um, we're able to make it where the customer can easily handle their payments and gratuity selections and things like that while the trip is in progress or even after the trip is, is over. So we're, we're putting a lot of work into that and I'll actually make a post maybe in the next you know, week or so uh, about you know, what's the status of that. We, we really put a lot of work and I think you guys are going to be really excited once you uh, see the uh, passenger web application. So. Um, Jared, I'm going to take maybe one, one or two more questions. Yeah, I think, I think one more question. One second here. This question is from Ross Green. Driver app seems to have issues when drivers add times. If they choose PM, it defaults back to AM. Then the time needs to be entered a second time to get the PM time entry to take. Are you familiar with this? Have you heard of this? I heard about it before, but I thought we had fixed it. I'll have to check into it again and make sure um, it's working as it should. But I'll definitely uh, look into that and get back to you, Ross. Yeah, I wonder if that's in three or four, right? Yeah, I mean, I can I can check in both in on I, on iOS and in, on Android as well. So we'll, we'll we'll take a look at it and I'll get back to you, Ross. Mm -hmm. Also, just speaking of the DA uh, 3 and 4, if you haven't switched to 4 yet, I would probably go ahead and switch to it. I mean, it's, it's very clean. I think uh, we've got a lot of great feedback of people using it and loving it. Um, at this point, I, I definitely could say, unless you have your drivers receiving additional gratuity, you know, uh, you know, through your customer's payments, right, on their phone, right, if, you, if you're allowing them to take payments, and they're taking gratuity, then that's probably the only reason to use uh, that application. Uh, otherwise, I would definitely switch to the uh, much better, the GPS better, uh, battery life is better. It's just uh, all around a better application with um, you know, easier to read and stuff like that. So driver anywhere for if you all are not on it already. Okay, and uh, this is from Steve Kwa. Are there any plans to create a bucket of canceled trips so they don't have to be settled? Hmm. 
that is a uh, you know everybody handles their canceled shows yeah, it's tough a little to bit differently <laughs> uh i think uh, we kind of want to get with uh um uh, steve and kind of see what he's he's uh, wanting to do there yeah so, yeah we'll have to follow up with you af after this steve so we did uh go over sca so so yes uh, richard it's it's definitely happening it's it's what we're currently working on uh from ross green credit card expiration notification uh, i'll go ahead we have another minute so i'll do another one it says uh can we get a notice for the upcoming expiration even a red box in the lower corner would be nice so uh Yes, in 2021, we are doing a major overhaul of our notification system. You know, not only how you see the notification, right? You know, like right now you're seeing that red box. So we, we want to update that and make it a little bit better. But we also want to give you notifications for things like expired credit cards. Um, your your driver's, uh, driver's licenses are expiring. Uh, duplicate reservations, uh, stuff like that. So we are going to put a lot of work, um, a lot of work into that, to where um, you can get notified on your uh, device via the mobile app or, uh, you know, internally in the in the web version. I think that is that's it. That's all the time that we have. So um, again, thanks everyone for showing up. If we did not get to your question here. Um, we do have all of them uh, recorded and someone will, will reach out to you, whether it's uh, myself, Jared, or someone from support, uh, you'll definitely hear from us. Uh, announcements, just be on the lookout for uh, this, our, our new passenger booking app uh, that, that is coming. We want to start beta here, uh, here fairly soon. So I'll definitely post whenever that's going to become available. And uh, we'll probably have not everybody jump on at once and uh, you know, kind of like a close would bring everyone on in, in, in tears. So, uh, so that is going to happen. And um, yeah, Jared, did you have anything you wanted to you wanted to announce? Yeah, yeah I, I just wanted, wanted to say, you know, of course, course thank you guys for, for coming out and, and uh, we appreciate your time, time definitely. definitely. Some, some of the the, the questions, questions that we did answer had some some, some steps in there uh, to kind of set up some things. So we will, uh, you know, you know, get that as long as as well um, uh, with the recap of some of the questions. Uh, that uh, we have talked about as well. We'll make sure to get that out to you guys. Yeah, and our next webinar, that's on the... the it was 27th, mm -hmm. I believe, was what we have it tentatively set for right now, but it is uh, definitely uh, be on the lookout for that. Uh, we're gonna, you know, uh, be looking at some of the uh, you know, uh, safety or enhancements and uh, possibilities with the CRM and, and marketing stuff. So, yep, yep, that's awesome. Well, um, again, thank you all for coming, and uh, I hope I see everyone in our uh, in our next webinar. And if you have any questions, always product team at lemonyware.com. If you have suggestions, you want to. You want to blow some steam? <laughs> you can just you can just uh, just uh, s send us an email and, and let us know what's going on. So uh, thanks yep. everyone. Bye. You're here. Bye.